Hey songwriters, this is Ari Koinima speaking for impactfulsongs.com and today I wanted to analyze the Beatles' Penny Lane and see what kind of songwriting techniques that we can learn from this song. It is commonly known that Paul is the sweet one and then the John is the weird one but um, beneath its sweet facade, Penny Lane is a really advanced songwriting and uh, there are chock full of uh, techniques that we can learn so let's have a look at it. Okay, so to start out, I'm going to sing the first verse. It goes something like this. In Penny Lane there is a barber showing photographs Of every head he's had the pleasure to know And all the people that come and go Stop and say hello On the corner he's a banker with a moniker The little children laugh at him behind his back and the banker never wears a Mac In the pouring rain Very strange So, as you can see, uh, it starts out in nice and sweet in a B and then goes from B to C sharp minor and then F7, F sharp 7 That part is all fine and dandy it's a traditional one, two, five sequence. But then after that, he goes to B and then B minor. Uh, officially, it's B minor seven, but I like to play B minor here because it illustrates the next move. From here, keep these three notes. It's a F sharp, B, and then D, right? And then change the bass note to G sharp. That will make it G sharp uh, minor seven flat five, and then and then G major seven, and then down back to, down to F sharp sus, uh, sus, and then F sharp seven, right? So a lesser, um, more beginning um, songwriter, I would say, <laughs> not lesser, but you know, less sophisticated songwriter would just go from B and then to F sharp, or repeat the same thing that you did the first time, but. He knew from going there, fear that he wanted to go down to F sharp, and then to you know make that move interesting. He first set up uh, the next chord, uh, next chord, which is B minor, and then moved the bass note, you know, which he was playing on the piano. So this is a common piano move where he has this one chord that is going on with the right hand, and he's just changing the left hand, and that did, that results in this uh, really. Uh, sophisticated uh, chord progression from from B to B minor and then G sharp G and then F sharp <laughs> and what th this does is uh, that despite it sounding kind of well looking scary at least on paper in practice the chord progressions just sound so smooth because each of the change only has a few note like a really subtle difference so from B to B minor it's just a one note difference and then change one note to just the bass note and another would just bass note change and then from here to uh, you know F sharp is just a little more change but uh, overall the progression sounds really nice and smooth so that is a lesson that we can learn is that you know don't go from like you know one to four you know, just change like completely, like you know, everything about a chord. But like, you know, there's something that you can do by just changing one note from an exist one chord to the next, which is evident in the next section as well. Okay, let me backtrack a little bit here, and then at the end of the verse, we went from F sharp. You know, just really emph emphasized F sharp, right? And then you think that you know, after this much emphasis on the five chord, you're going back to the B, but instead he goes to E, and then go up to the A, which the chorus is in the key of A. So the song started in the key of B, but the, he transitioned to the, the key of A, and the, how he did that is using E chord as a pivot. And the reason it works is because E is one chord that exists in both the key of B and key of A. 
in the key of B, E is the four chord, and in the key of A, you know, the um, E is the five chord. So even though it is a key change, it sounds really, doesn't really strike you as something that's just totally out of place because of this common chord between them. And that's like one of the three ways that you can change key in the middle of the song. One is called the uh, common chord transposition, which is this one is. And then another one is common note transposition. And then the third one is a direct transposition. Direct transposition you want to be careful with because if you do it, uh, it sounds really jarring. It just, you know, can come out, you know, like it just came out of nowhere. But then the common chord transposition smooths out that transition because uh, a chord that's in the both keys are you being used as the glue that puts the two together. And then from there... Uh, that's a little out of tune, but anyway... Um, Go from A to A over C sharp, and then D, he repeats that th uh, three times, and then it goes into F sharp, which is not really in the key of A, a but it sounds familiar, because that's actually back to the key of B, and it, um, it doesn't sound too foreign. In the key of A, you should really see an F sharp minor, but then you should just change it to F sharp major, and actually add it to sevenths and make it dominant chord. Now finally, um, I wanted to point out that uh, you know this song is basically just a verse and chorus song. There is a twist of having the second half of the second verse being the solo, but structurally and harmonically, this is just the exact same verse and chorus repeated three times. And the reason why it works is A, because the chord progression already is very interesting but also because uh, there's a big contrast in style between the verse and chorus. And because they are so different from each other, you don't get tired of how it, one goes from, to the, from one goes to the other and then back. Even though a lot of the songs, you know, if you hear the verse chorus pattern twice, you, know, you really need a bridge in the song because you're like, oh, I'm sick of that pa pattern, I need something new. But that's not the case in this song. And one of the reasons why it's so good is because, again, it, the, the contrast between the two sections is big and the, the rhythmic motif that is used in each of the sections is very distinct. So in the verse, he uses this dotted rhythm. Right? So it's that dotted, the fast and busy dotted uh, rhythm there. Whereas in the chorus, Penny Lane, it's in my ear, in my eyes. Ta 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 We've studied elsewhere in the impactful songwriting that having a rhythmic motif to A melody is a very um, good thing. You know, it makes the melody more memorable because the rhythm has a very sort of a distinct pattern to it. So he's using one pattern for the verse and different pattern for the chorus. And as you can see, the verse pattern is busier and quicker. The chorus pattern is more flowing and, uh, and open sounding. And that contrast is further strengthened um, you know, by the use of these two different uh, rhythmic motifs. Okay, so in summary, today we looked at the Penny Lane by the Beatles, Paul McCartney, and we observed three different songwriting techniques. One is how the verse has this sophisticated chord progression, but while on the paper it looks really scary, in reality, it's just a chord that is changing by one note at a time and how that you know, sounds really advanced but at the same time really smooth. And the second thing is the key change that happens between verse and chorus and how that is executed through the use of common chords. And thirdly, that contrast between verse and chorus is further strengthened by Paul's use of distinct rhythmic motifs in the melody between verse and chorus and how they sound really different from each other but um, both memorable at the same time 
and that makes the song more interesting to listen to and because it's so interesting to listen to the song doesn't really need a, a, a bridge it just has a straight verse chorus repeated three times in a row and then you have one of the you know best songs most well-known songs in the world so these are all great songwriting techniques that we can all apply to our own songwriting and while few of our songs will probably reach the height of you know the Beatles classic we can still aspire to write as well as Sir Paul McCartney did. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, there are more episodes of songwriting analysis and songwriting lessons on impactfulsongs.com. So I hope you come visit me and let me know if you have any other questions or suggestions of songs that I should analyze. And I will definitely consider it. Thank you. Step on.